Okay, so I've already solved uh, question 8-47 uh, in another video of this playlist, the density altitude playlist, but I want to show you how I put the numbers through the, um, the density altitude slash pressure altitude worksheet. That is this sheet right here. Okay, I'm going to show you how I put the numbers in. Okay. What I do is I start with a clean piece of paper and a pencil. And we look at the question, determine the pressure altitude. So we're looking for pressure altitude. I usually, by the way, put what I'm looking for at the top of the, the question, the, the top of the page, just to remind me what I'm looking for, which is pressure altitude. Determine the pressure altitude given an indicated altitude and an altimeter sitting of whatever, okay? I want you to look at my worksheet here. Remember they're looking for pressure altitude. Well, if you look down here, the answer you're finally going to get is going to be called PA, or pressure altitude. So all we need to do is plug in the numbers into this box and then follow the flow. So, how do we get the numbers for the box? Well, most of it's in the question, and some of it is in... this table here, which I call the pressure altitude conversion factor table. Okay, let's start plugging in numbers. Now, I'm not going to write on this sheet, but I'll just parallel it on this piece of paper here. So, I'm going to just write A, B, and C. And the first thing you want to put into A is the given altimeter value. And the given altimeter value in the question is 28.22. So I'm going to write 28.22. That's given in the question. Now, B and C are going to be the altimeter values that this number falls between on this pressure altitude conversion factor chart. So you look on the chart, and you see here there is no 28.22, but there is a 28.2. 28.22 falls somewhere between 28.2 and 28.3. So, we go back to our paper here, and we write in B the number that's just above 28.2. We put in 28.20. And we put in the number that's just after 28.22, if it existed in the chart, which would be... 28.30. Now you notice they don't put in the zeros, the zero here, which is the hundredths place. This is the tens place after the decimal. This is the hundredths. I put the hundredths in. And I put the hundredths in just to keep the math simple. It reduces errors. So just add the zeros, even though they don't put them in. So I'm filling out what I call my altimeter matrix here. Okay? Now you notice in my matrix, once the numbers are filled in, I have two lines going from B and C to two blank lines. So I'm going to draw that. I'm going to draw an arrow here on, on B. I'm going to draw an arrow on C. And I'm going to draw a line here and a line here. You'll also notice that I call this line here B star. So I just put in a little B star. Okay. Now, what do I put in those? Well, it's pretty simple. If you look at the chart here, 28.2 corresponds to a pressure... Not so easy to do with a video camera, but we're trying. It, it, um, 28.2 um, is associated with a pressure altitude conversion factor of 1,630 feet. 1,630 feet. The 28.3 is associated with a conversion factor of 1,533 feet. Okay, so now we're filling in the information that I need in this box. We don't even need the charts and we don't need the, the table anymore, none of, that, none of that stuff. We can get rid of it. All we need now is our worksheet. Okay.
So I filled in these two conversion factors which came from the table in these blanks right here. The next thing you want to do, this little arrow thing here means you just want to take the difference between these two numbers. That means just take the smaller number and subtract it from the bigger number. And you should always do that with a calculator because it's less room for error. Some people call it the lazy way, but I don't think of that. I don't think of it that way. Anything that reduces error is the way you want to do things. So you take 1630 minus 1533. And you come out with an answer of, the calculator is dying, but it says 97. So 97. It's 97 feet, by the way. So every single time when you fill out this matrix, you fill out this matrix, you're basically just looking for the difference between B and C. B and C. 97. Every single time you'll draw that little funky arrow thing and write the difference between these two numbers. You'll see why later. Now we go back to our formula sheet. Our flow sheet says we want to find um, the difference between, we want to, well, A minus B will give us a value, C minus B will give us a value. I named those values E and F. So what you basically just remember to do in every single case is you want to write A minus B equals E and you want to write C minus B equals F. And then you just plug in the numbers. So A is 28.22, because that's A. B is 28.20, and therefore E is 28.22 minus 28.20 and you use your calculator 28.22 minus 28.20 and that gives you an answer of 0 0.02 now we go on to this formula every single time you'll do this you'll take whatever number is in C which is 28.30 for this question, whatever's in B, which is 28.20, and then you'll subtract one from the other, so it's 28, oh, let me switch calculators, this one's gone, 28.20, By the way, that can happen during the test. That's why I brought two calculators. 28.30 minus 28.20 gives you an answer. F equals 0.1. By the way, if you look in my formula sheet, 97 feet is what D is equal to. Just remember, D is equal to 97 feet, E is now equal to 0 0.02, F is equal to 0 0.1. Then we go back to the flow sheet. There's a formula you memorize, and that formula is G is equal to D divided by F multiplied by E. So let's find what G is. We know that D is 97. We know that F is 0.1. We know we're going to multiply it, right, by E, which is 0 0.02. What you do is you divide 97 by 0 0.1 first, and then multiply it by 0 0.02. So work from your left to your right. And that's what G is going to equal. So let's do that. It's 97 divided by 0.1, you get a number, then you multiply that number by 0.02. And you get another number, which is what G equals. So it's 19.4. So G is equal to 19.4. That's feet, by the way. So there's your G. So far, so good. 
Now we go back to the flow sheet here, the worksheet, and you're going to take B star, which is this number that was here, so that's 1630, 1630, minus G, which we just found, which is 19.4. Right, so that's B star, right, minus G. And what's 1630 minus 19.4? Let's see. 1630 minus 19.4 gives you 1610.6, which you're going to round off to 1611 feet. And if you look at the flow chart, that means H is now equal to 1,611 feet. Okay? By the way, this H is your pressure altitude conversion factor. Now, all you have to do is add H to the indicated altitude they gave you in the question. If you look in the question, the indicated altitude, there it is, indicated altitude was 1,380 feet. So you take 1,380 feet and add it to H. And the answer you get is 2,991 feet. This is your pressure altitude. Because if you see here, H plus the indicated altitude which is given becomes the pressure altitude. So your pressure altitude is 2,991 feet. And let's see if that is in fact the answer. If you look at the question, There's the answer, 2,991 feet. The answer is B. That is the correct answer. So even if you don't know what you're doing, if you just put everything through this worksheet, you'll come out with the right pressure altitude. So bottom line is they'll give you an altitude. I take it back. They give you an altimeter you find where that altimeter setting falls in the pressure conversion chart you find the number that's above it, the number that's below it, and put it into this matrix here you find the conversion factors, you put them into these lines here you, you minus one from the other, that gives you what I call D then you remember A minus B gives you E C minus B gives you F, this is very easy to memorize, once you've done this a few times you don't even need to think in terms of C's and B's once you get that number, you plug it into this formula here every single time. That the new number G is equal to the D divided by the F multiplied by the E. Then you subtract that number from whatever number was up here, which I call B star. So B star minus G gives you H. Then, once you have H, you just add that to the indicated altitude which is given in the question. And that answer is your pressure altitude. You follow that blindly, you'll get the answer right every single time. But I do encourage you, after you've done a few of these and seen you can get the answer correct for the test, that you learn conceptually why each step does what it does and why it's important. But for now, you need to get the right answer on the test. And this is a good starting point.